Okay, so <clears throat> before I leave Tokyo, this is my apartment by the way, I'm standing in the bedroom and this is the kitchen and this is the bathroom and I wanted to make a movie to show you the various fine features which may seem odd but when you see them you will know why. Um, so you come in and um, you know, it's a sink and nothing very special about that but my toilet is an all singing, all dancing Japanese toilet. Um, it does a lot of neat things. You'll see there's this um, electronic panel here uh, on the seat and uh, tells you what it's doing at various times. It has various modes. Um, and also here on the wall is this little box with handy English instructions. And this tells you the various things that the toilet can do. Um, it has a feature to wash your rear, as you can see, and you can control um, the pressure, the temperature, and whatever other features for your personal comfort. There's also something called a uh, bidet for women, <laughs> which, which I must admit I did not try out while I was here. Perhaps I should have. Um, so yeah, and then there's, um, you can, you know, fool around, you can have the water go in different directions, you can basically do all kinds of things. And I believe there's also a deodorizing function, which perhaps is practical. Um, but this is, I should say, not as fancy as some toilets I have seen while I've been here in Japan. There are a couple in the posh department stores which also have things like um, a temperature control to heat the toilet seat. Um, what else? The deodorizing sprays. Oh, and also you can press a button and the toilet will make a flushing sound so as to disguise uh, any sounds you yourself may be making to spare you any embarrassment or discomfort, which is awfully considerate of the Japanese, don't you think? Um, but wait, that's not all. It's not just the toilet, no. There is the shower room. You see it's a little separate room off the bathroom. Um, and it took me a day or two to figure out exactly what this room was all about. Because if you'll notice, the shower head is up here, kind of pointing into the bathroom, instead of over the tub. And the tub focus here. The tub is, uh, as you can see, very short, very small. Why am I not focused? Sorry. Hang on, let's give it a sec. Here we go. Yeah, the tub is uh, very small, but it's very deep. Um, it turns out this is a Japanese style soaker tub. And what I discovered after a day or two here is that what you're supposed to do is stand in this part of the bathroom, which is why there's a sh shower caddy thing here. You stand here, you have your shower and you wash, shampoo your hair and whatever, and then only at that point do you fill up the tub and you use the tub strictly to soak. I don't know why my camera keeps doing this. Anyway, yeah, so the tub is just for soaking and you have to be clean when you get into it. Apparently the Japanese think it's kind of disgusting to get into a bathtub to soak if you haven't washed yourself first. So, um, anyway. The bathtub also has a panel with instructions, as you can see, and this is the English one. So with the bathtub, you can press a button to automatically fill it. There's also a button outside the room, so you can fill the bathtub from outside if you so wish. There are controls for the temperature, up or down. Uh, there are controls for the depth of the water in the tub, higher or lower. You can adjust that. Um, and as it's doing things, a lady's voice comes on and chats to you and plays merry tunes to let you know in Japanese what's going on at all times. Um, there's even a button on here. Which one is it? Um, anyway, I don't know which one it is, but there is a button on here so that if you're soaking for a long time and the water gets cold, you can press the button and it will heat the tub water back up again which is really quite amazing. So there you have it. Yes, it's all very high-tech, 
organized and designed for comfort. So, this now concludes my tour of Japanese bathroom facilities. Thank you for your attention.